Parents of twin girls loved only one and hated the other for having Down syndrome. But when the father suffers an accident and needs a liver transplant and the little girl is his only salvation, they ask for forgiveness on their knees. In a modest house on the outskirts of town, Valerie and Ronnie lived a simple life, but one full of emotional complexities. They were the parents of twin girls, Lisa and Luna, who were eight years old. But the way they treated each of them couldn't have been more different. That afternoon, the sunlight streamed softly through the curtains in the living room, illuminating the space where the girls were playing. Lisa, with her blonde hair and blue eyes, was building a castle out of colorful blocks, while Luna, who looked almost exactly like her sister except for something peculiar, was making up stories with her dolls. The harmony of the scene was interrupted by Valerie's voice announcing dinner. Dinner time, Lisa, she said, with a smile that quickly faded as she looked at Luna. Without hesitating, the woman took Lisa by the hand, led her to the dining table and settled her in the chair. Luna, for her part, remained on the floor, watching the scene with a sad and confused look on her face. With mechanical movements, the mother served Lisa with care, placing a succulent steak on her plate, accompanied by potatoes and vegetables. For Luna, however, the approach was cold and distant. She took a plastic bowl, put rice and beans in it, and put it on the floor. Here, eat, she said dryly and without any affection. The little girl looked at her sister, who was smiling contentedly at the fresh orange juice served by their mother. The unfair treatment was painfully obvious. Mommy, can I have some juice too? She asked in a shy voice, hoping for a gesture of love. The answer came in the form of a shout. No! exclaimed Valerie, irritated. Ronnie, until then silent, finally intervened, but unfortunately not to defend his little daughter. Go eat in your room, Luna. Go on, he said, with a tone that didn't admit disobedience. The little girl picked up her bowl her eyes shining with tears. On the way to his room, the laughter of her parents and sister echoed like cruel reminders of her reality. She closed the bedroom door softly behind her, put the bowl down, and sat on the bed. She looked at the food without appetite, thinking about the love that seemed to be exclusive to his sister. The girl began to cry, a silent but deep cry that shook her thin body. Luna had always known that she was different that somehow she wasn't as loved as Lisa was. At that moment, the pain of this rejection became unbearable. Why don't they love me like they love Lisa? She thought, as tears streamed down her face. Loneliness and sadness enveloped her, suffocating her with the cruel reality that her life had always been like this. It turns out that Valerie and Ronnie had always dreamed of the day when they would be parents to twin girls. They imagined a perfect family, with two identical girls sharing laughs and joy. However, when Luna and Lisa were born, their dreams were shattered. The girls were beautiful, but not completely identical. Luna was born with Down's syndrome, a condition her parents were not prepared to face. Ever since she was a baby, she was seen as a nuisance, an unwanted complication in their perfectly planned life. The years passed, and the difference in the sisters' treatment became the norm at home. Lisa was the loved one, receiving all the attention from their parents. Luna, on the other hand, was often neglected, receiving minimal care and rarely taking part in family activities. Why can't I go to the park too? She asked once, her brown eyes full of hope. Because you'd kill the fun, Valerie replied coldly. And so Luna watched from the window as her family set off for another trip without her. Loneliness was Luna's constant companion, but Lisa sometimes brought moments of joy. Despite their parents' mistreatment towards Luna, Lisa loved her twin unconditionally. They shared secrets and dreams and had fun together. The girl was the only one who made Luna feel loved and valued. And that afternoon, Luna was in her room, eating the cold meal, reflecting on her difficult life. Her thoughts were interrupted when Lisa entered the room with a conspiratorial gleam in her eyes. I brought this for you, Lou, she whispered revealing a piece of steak that she managed to hide from their parents. Luna looked at her sister, surprised and touched by the kindness. But what about mom and dad? She asked, fearing the consequences. They don't need to know. Lisa replied with a mischievous smile on her lips. I don't like to see you sad. You don't deserve this. You deserve everything I have and more. Her sister's words warmed the little girl's heart. 
At that moment, with a simple gesture of sharing a piece of steak, Lisa showed the power of sisterly love. Luna felt a rush of emotions, a mixture of sadness about her situation at home and gratitude for her sister's kindness. Thank you, Lisa. You're the best sister in the world, she said, the words barely coming out through tears of emotion. And you're the best sister I could ask for, Lisa replied, hugging her sister. In that embrace, Luna found comfort and security. Despite her parents' rejection, she had something precious, her sister's unconditional love. This love was a beacon of hope, a reminder that no matter how difficult life was, they would always have each other. On another sunny afternoon, the twins were playing carefree in their bedroom, their laughter filling the air with contagious joy. The parents just watched them from afar, but even in this moment of joy, the difference in treatment between the two was evident. After a few hours, Valerie approached her daughters with a forced smile. Lisa, love, let's get ready. We're going to a party tonight, announced the woman, completely ignoring Luna. But what about Luna? Lisa asked, holding her sister's hand. Luna will stay at home. The party is no place for her, the father replied without a hint of hesitation or empathy in his voice. Luna felt the weight of rejection fall on her shoulders, a feeling that was already so familiar. She tried to smile, tried to show that everything was fine, but inside, a storm of sadness and loneliness was brewing. It's okay, Lisa. I, I'll be fine, she murmured, forcing a smile. With her sister and parents leaving for the party, Luna was left alone at home. She wandered around with every corner of the house a reminder of her loneliness. In a moment of deep sadness, she stopped in front of the mirror, looking at her reflection. Why me? Why do I have to be so different? She thought, with tears streaming down her face. The house was silent, and Luna's loneliness only seemed to be amplified by the absence of her family. But this stillness was abruptly interrupted when the front door burst open. Her mother rushed in, her face bathed in tears and with despair in her eyes. Luna, Luna, we have to go now. Valerie shouted, grabbing the girl's hand with urgency. Mom, what happened? Why are you crying? She asked, confused and frightened by the sudden turn of events. Your father, he, he had an accident at the party. A glass broke and he slipped, falling right on top of it. He punctured his liver, the woman explained through sobs, pulling Luna towards the car. But why had the woman come back to take her to the hospital? Luna didn't understand. Confusion and fear grew inside her as her mother drove at high speed. Mom, why are you taking me to the hospital? Why me? She asked, her voice shaking. Valerie looked at Luna, her eyes still full of tears, but now with a gleam of desperate hope. Because Luna, maybe you can save your father, she said her voice laden with a complex emotion that the girl had never heard before. At that moment, urgency, fear, and the possibility of doing something truly important consumed the little girl. The idea of being able to help her father, of being needed in such a critical way, stirred something inside her. At the hospital, the white, impersonal corridor became the scene of a family drama that no one could have predicted. Luna, still confused and frightened by the haste and fear that had marked her departure from home, underwent a series of tests. The doctors, with serious and concentrated expressions, confirmed that she was compatible to donate part of her liver to her father. Ah, oh, thank God, she'll have the surgery then, said the mother, who was visibly shaken, with tears streaming freely down her face, while Lisa, by her side, tried to be strong despite her sadness. But then, Luna simply said, No, I will not. The woman was petrified by her daughter's audacity. Yes, you will. He's your father, you insolent girl. You will have the surgery. But the little girl, even at just eight years old, expressed a pain that went far beyond her years. Why do you want my help now? Don't you hate me? The little girl's question echoed down the corridor, leaving a heavy silence in the air. The doctors, witnesses to this emotional exchange, were stunned, not knowing how to react. The innocence of the question contrasted painfully with the complexity of the situation. Her mother, taken aback by Luna's brutal honesty, was speechless, looking at everyone who was now staring at her with the words stuck in her throat. Luna continued, with tears in her eyes and her voice choked with sobs. Dad always treated me badly and, and you too, Mom. Why do I have to help him now? Her voice, 
full of resentment and sadness, made everyone present feel the weight of her words. Is that true? Realizing the girl's emotional state, the doctors decided it was best to take her to another room, a place where she could calm down away from the tension of the moment. Lisa, firmly at her sister's side, held her hand, offering silent support. However, before heading off with the doctors, Lisa turned to her mother, her eyes reflecting a mixture of pain and accusation. She's right, Mom. You don't love her, she said, his voice low but full of conviction. Everyone was shocked, including Valerie, who was left behind, looking at where her family had been moments before. Next to her, Ronnie lay unconscious on the stretcher, oblivious to the emotional storm raging around him. The silence that followed was a mute testimony to the pain and regret that permeated the woman's heart. The reality of her actions and the consequences of her choices had never been so clear, leaving her stunned at the truth she could no longer ignore. The tension in the hospital increased considerably with the arrival of the family and children's service agent who was called in because of the doctor's concerns about the twins' mistreatment. The room became a scene of emotional and legal confrontation, where Valerie's motherhood would be questioned in ways she had never imagined. The agent, after a brief conversation with the doctors to understand the situation, turned their attention to Valerie. I'm here to discuss the difference in the way you treat each daughter. The agent began, his expression serious and expectant. Especially about the mistreatment of Luna and how her condition plays a role in all this. The woman, pale and nervous, tried to justify herself. I... we've always loved our daughters. It's just that Lisa has always needed more care. Really, ma'am? Lisa was the one who needed special care? The man interrupted. And now, when there's a need for a transplant, Luna becomes convenient. That's ridiculous, to say the least. Before the woman could answer, one of the doctors approached, interrupting the tense conversation. Luna has agreed to proceed with the donation, he said, giving Valerie a brief relief. However, the relief was short-lived, as the doctor continued. However, the Family and Children's Service has determined that, after the procedure, the girls will be in the temporary custody of the state. What? The shocking news left Valerie speechless as she processed the gravity of the situation. The agent then explained the condition under which Luna agreed to the transplant. After she recovers, Luna wants to go to a home where she will be truly loved and valued. And Lisa insisted on staying with her sister. So they both go to a temporary home. The conversation unfolded with increasing intensity as the woman tried to absorb the reality that she could lose custody of her daughters. The decision not only reflected Ronnie's medical urgency, but also a condemnation of the family environment that the twins were forced to endure. And so, they carried out the surgery. With the new transplant, the father's health stabilized, but the family's emotional stability was far from recovered. While he was slowly returning to consciousness, justice was already in motion, with the process of withdrawing custody of the girls progressing rapidly. The irony of the situation was bitter. Luna's gesture in saving her father's life paradoxically marked the beginning of the end of her life under their roof. After the transplant and life in hospital, things slowly began to return to normal. But for Luna and Lisa's family, nothing would ever be the same again. Ronnie, still weak but physically recovering, could hardly believe the turn his life had taken. In a desperate attempt to make amends for past mistakes, he and Valerie decided to fight in court for custody of their daughters. During the legal proceedings, the girl's testimony was crucial. Luna, with impressive maturity for her age, shared her life experience, marked by indifference and unequal treatment from her parents. But it was Lisa's testimony that resonated strongly in the courtroom. We deserve to be loved for who we are, not when we're convenient, she said her simple but powerful words painting a vivid picture of the reality she and her sister faced. The doctors who followed the case also contributed, detailing not only Luna's medical condition, but the extraordinary courage she showed in agreeing to donate part of her liver to save her father, despite everything. In front of the judge, the mother tried to express her remorse. We didn't know, we didn't understand. She began sobbing between words. But now we see how wrong we were, and we just want a chance to show that we can be better. However, Valerie's words of regret were not enough to erase the years of neglect and mistreatment. The judge, after careful consideration, decided to permanently take custody away from the parents, keeping the children's safety as his main concern. 
It is my duty to ensure that Luna and Lisa grow up in an environment where they are valued and loved unconditionally. He said in his decision. No, please, no. The parents cried with tears in their eyes, if they were crying at losing their two daughters and not just the one they loved. The couple left the court in tears, aware that the decision was irrevocable. The irony of their situation was bitter. For Ronnie, the man who rejected one of his daughters just because she was different, would live with a piece of her inside him forever. They lost their daughters but hoped that Luna and Lisa would find the happiness they were denied at home. And that hope came true. The twins were adopted by a loving couple who saw in Luna as the beautiful and courageous girl she was. The girls finally found a home where they were appreciated for their uniqueness, a place where love was not conditional or measured. Together, in their new family, they grew up knowing what it meant to be truly loved. They flourished, free from the shadow of prejudice and indifference, proving that love, in its purest form, sees beyond limitations and embraces each individual for who they truly are. And so the twins were happy, surrounded by the love and acceptance they had always deserved. And if you like this story, I'm sure the next video that pops up on your screen will move you too. Don't forget to subscribe, give us a thumbs up, and activate the notification bell so you don't miss any of our upcoming videos. See you in the next heartwarming story.